I see it is 12 31 p.m. on a Wednesday and I'm not working. It's nice. Mischief behind me. And we are headed up 3.9 miles to McAfee Knob, if I pronounced that right. I think I did. So we've got plenty of time. Take it nice and easy, enjoy the sights for a sunset tonight. So the goal is to do the Virginia Triple Crown Loop. We'll see how that goes. Five days, nice and slow. Privy over there. I know, so close. Two night camping level, huh? I guess that's because we're so close to places. So many, so many people. Here's a water source. Very cool. Two thirty-three p.m. and seventy-four degrees. Huh, mischief. Yeah, pretty warm. So we just passed. The, what was the name of that shelter? Campbell. Campbell Shelter. No, Catawba. Catawba Shelter. Okay. So we've only got, according to the sign, one point five miles left to McAfee Knob. McAfee. I'll never get the name of that right. McAfee <laughs> Knob. Man. So we're almost there, and we're taking it slow, but got plenty of time. I think we're gonna get a pretty good sunset. Whew. All right, two miles in, Bobo. You hot yet? Take that as a yes. Funny, that sign says McAfee Knob, 1.2 miles, and then that sign says 1.3 miles to the overlay. I think it's that way, though. So for clarification, I think we're gonna follow that little ridge line over there. Go over to Tinker Cliffs Camp somewhere down off that ridge line on the shelter. And then we're gonna come down. I don't know why it's focusing on my finger. Down that valley and then up that slope and then walk that whole ridge line and camp somewhere around there tomorrow and head down to Dragon Tooth. <laughs> Can 
Not even four high. miles, what it was 3.9 at most. Yeah. You look very concerned. Do you mind if I come to bed? Is that okay with you? Yeah. It's like 5.33 a.m. 52 degrees. So we're headed back up to the top of the cafe knob to go watch the sunrise. We left our tent down there and uh, made a, I made a tea. And uh, since it's not that cold, I think it's gonna be a really nice sunrise. At least, nice experience for a sunrise, how's that? So, I think we got 0.6 miles to hike up. So a 0.6 mile hike for this view. I think it was worth it. Alright, 6.52 a.m. and we are hiking back to the campsite. I'm going to try not to hit any trees. So, uh, back to the pig farm after a pretty darn cool sunrise. Gaffy Knob. And uh, I'm going to feed Bobo breakfast. I already ate mine while I was up there. And uh, going to pack up and then start heading over to Tinker Cliffs. I think it's... Uh, about five point something miles. Actually, it's less mileage to Tinker Cliffs, but then we have to do like an extra mile and a half to get to the shelter. So we'll stop like we did tonight. Watch sunset and then hike on to the shelter. At least that's the plan. a.m. and we just loaded up with water uh, the water starts right next to the shelter here at the pig farm I've got three liters Bobo has a liter so I think we're good 
because there is no water sources in between here and Tinker Cliffs, which is only four something miles. Um, we'll stop there probably for a long while to watch the sunset and then we'll hike the 1.6 from there down to Lambert Shelter, which is where the next water source is at. Chuck is back here. I missed you. Oh yeah, he's right behind. Coming down the switchbacks. Okay, so Tinker Cliffs, 1.3 miles already. It is 12.07 p.m. And we've already taken an hour and a half break <clears throat> at the last Vista Point. We stopped and ate a early lunch and just relaxed since we got so much time. Feels hot, 64 degrees, 64 degrees sweat of course that little uphill that helped Whew. it's like the third or fourth camping spot all that are not legal by the way because technically you can only 
camp at the approved spots, which are uh, the shelter that we stayed at last night, or the area of pig, pig barn, and uh, where we're going tonight, Lambert Shelter. So those would be unofficial areas. Except there's a shelter right down there. Must be another one. Whew. Okay, it's 5.32 p.m., 64 degrees, and we're at Tinker Cliffs. In fact, uh, we've been here for the last two and a half hours. We got here at 2 p.m., and we've got, what, about 57 minutes to sunset, and that's what we're waiting on. Um, as you can tell, we're, uh, it's really hard waiting. <laughs> Chuck is napping, Mischief is relaxing, and uh, just enjoying the views. That obviously is west, and that's the mountain that we started on this morning. And we are going to Dragon's Tooth, which is that mountain out there in the distance. So we're gonna, it's gonna take us a, a day and a half or more to get there. So we gotta head over on that side, drop down in the valley, come up that north mountain, go all the way across, and then back down the valley and then up again to Dragon's Tooth. Okay, it's 6.36 p.m. We watched the sunset from Tinker Glyphs, and it was pretty spectacular, I gotta admit. 
and uh, we met Tim, who is an ultra runner who comes up here quite a lot for sunsets, either with Kathy or Tinker. And um, just got some really great pictures and some video. And now we've got a 1.5 mile hike uh, to the Lambert Shelter or Lambert Meadow um, Shelter. It's 1.4 to the shelter, 1.5 to the tent spot, and that's probably where I'm going to go. And there's a creek there so we can fill it with water. So we would have loved to camp on Tinker, but it's not legal and we didn't have any water. So I kind of rolled out now. Oh, by the way, when they say, or if somebody tells you, you're never going to meet a ranger. Yeah, I ran into a ranger. I'll post this pic right here. It is 7.55 a.m. 54 degrees, and we're just leaving the Lambert's Meadow camping area. Chuck and uh, Mischief have both left before me. Uh, Chuck's gonna stop at the shelter and use the privy, and uh, Mischief is just trying to get a head start. So, Slept great, slept about eight something hours last night. And uh, I have to say I was pretty warm actually, but I did have a 20 degree quilt. It wasn't that cold at all last night. Um, but it's better to, to be too warm than too cold. So, no complaints. Uh, I had the water source right there. So I got two liters of water and that'll have to last us four miles as uh, I'm gonna walk back about half a mile on the AT, headed back southbound until I hit Andy Lane Trail. And then we'll follow that for about three and a half miles. And I hear it's a doozy. Here they have, it's a major down with some serious steps. And then at the bottom of that should be the Catawba River where we will fill up with water. And then, um, and that'll be a, that's gotta last us till the following morning plus six miles or so maybe seven so in other words a total of uh what 11 miles we're gonna camp on top of um north mountain and there's no water for an 11 mile stretch so it's gonna be a long water carry mostly uphill so it's gonna suck <laughs> but but it should be uh should be fun how do you say suck and fun in the same paragraph there hmm. But anyway, it'll be interesting. Okay, we have all reconvened. There's Chuck, Mischief, they're all back. Uh, we're at the point where the AT intersects Andy Lane. Uh, it's about 0.8 all uphill to get here. The, the sign says 0.6, but we, we think it lies. 
And so now we're gonna hop on Andy Lane. And how far are we going with Andy Lane? Four, 2.7. 2.7. Don't listen to me on any numbers unless I hear it from and that was one of these two. To the shelter. It was 0.8 okay, that's what it was. So now we're gonna do 2.7 with a lot of steps downhill. Yep. Major downhill. And then we'll get some water. Mr. are you telling me we gotta go back up the other side? It looks like it's uphill over there. <laughs> hey, as if the downhill wasn't bad enough. Now we gotta, gotta go back uphill. Do you think it's gonna rain? It looks like rain. All right, let's see. Um, let's see, 1.1 to the Andy Lane Trailhead. And this is the last good known water source. So I'm gonna have four liters. Yep, four liters. Bobo's gonna carry a liter for herself. <laughs> and um, and then we're, after the Andy Lane Trailhead, we'll be heading over to North Mountain where there's no good known water sources. So we gotta load up and then climb up the North Mountain. Yep. So we're taking a long, nice break here. Good bubble. Is that good? Oh yeah, it's a nice, nice snack. She ain't gonna complain. Price tag on it. <laughs> yeah. Wobbly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we stopped at the water source and ate what filled up. Thank you, sir. You too. So this must be the water source they said might be dry. 
Um, they said it was burning two weeks ago, but it's been dry the last couple weeks, so it might not be here. It's here. Uh, walk bys, well, mostly. Hold on, I'll come with you. <laughs> That was the longest, what I thought would be 1.6 miles, ended up being 2.43. And uh, most of that was the last mile and a half up. About an 1100 foot elevation gain right now, we're at 2690 feet. So, might, might be even more than that. I can't remember what the map said. Oh, a little bit down from the, the river. 62 degrees and I am sweating like crazy, but we have made it to the North Mountain Trail. She's tired, I'm tired. And we still have at least uh, 2.7 to go to get to the Turkey Trail. But it's uh, one o'clock. And oh, by the way, I got about 100% of the 24% chance of rain. It really was only a, a light, light sprinkle. Honestly, at that point, I was hoping it would rain. <laughs> but uh, I think it blew over. Uh, the breeze up here is super nice. I'm going to stop, have a snack, and wait on Chuck and Mischief. So you know this was the AT back in the 70s for a little while because it just goes straight up the dang little knob here on this bridge. Whew. Beautiful trail otherwise though. Hi, here I am at the intersection of the Turkey Trail where we had thought so the North Mountain Trail intersects the Turkey Trail. And we thought this would be a good gap for us to camp at. What do you think of the camp in here, Chuck? I could hang here. <laughs> yeah, you could hang here. But there's nothing, nothing really flat here. There's the Turkey Trail. Most difficult. So I'm guessing we're gonna have to go to the next, on the other side of that that little mountain there and see what's flat over there. By the way, it's 4.19 p.m. Hi, my friend Chuck. Uh, that's a valley. That's a sign. That's a, another mountain. And then there's another valley out there somewhere. We're in the middle of a, of a what, a mountain ridge? Is that what you would call it? Yeah. yeah. North Mountain Ridge. It's still better than work.
So, it is 5.12 in the evening and we are just now making Bobo's dinner. She's having the same meal as me, dehydrated beef and a broccoli and cheddar soup. It was a, it was a lot of uphill today. That, that's trash, by the way, the subway. We didn't, I didn't have subway today. Um, we did uh, about nine and a half miles is what I'm thinking. So, we're gonna, we're gonna sleep well tonight in this windy gap, but can't beat the views. Yeah, that was a good win. All right, 6.43 a.m., 41 degrees. And I've been up for a little bit, but just finally actually got up in order to make uh, some tea, so. Some is it's actually really pretty. Color's already muted a little bit though. Okay, 7.40 a.m. And it is now 43 degrees. So, we are moving. Actually, check left first, then mischief, and now me. So, we've got a total of about 8.2 miles to do today. But our first major milestone is at six miles. We're gonna hit uh, 311, the road, and a quarter mile road hike. It's supposed to be a grocery store. And uh, yeah, I gotta admit, I'm looking forward to a Mountain Dew. Cold, refreshing Mountain Dew there. Plus I think we're gonna grab some, uh, I think it's a, it's a Catawba grocery store, is what it says. So hopefully they'll have some, maybe some roast beef and cheese and I can snack on that. It'd be a nice lunch. So, uh, six miles should be give or take three or four hours. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, three or four hours. Yeah, depending upon how Mischief's feet are doing. A little sore after yesterday's tromp. So, uh, we'll go from there. But right now, it's supposedly this ridge line. The next five miles, no, I'm sorry, four miles, four miles of ridge line, and then it drops off. The ridge line drops off down to 311. So I'm thinking it's gonna be a lot like it was yesterday, which is minor little ups and downs. It's really pretty, really uh, fun walking this. It's just, I don't know, it's just neat being on this spine of this mountain. So, gonna enjoy it. While I hiked this little part here, I'm going to update about the, the winds last night. So, according to mountain forecast, it said, I think, sustained winds at 20 mile an hour. And that was definitely true, but we had gusts, I say easily 40 mile an hour, that would come through. And uh, the place already looked like a war zone, I believe, from the ice storm that happened two weeks prior. They got two to three inches of ice up here and everything on this mountain range is just, not everything, but a lot is broken, falling over or hanging in the trees. So those winds may be pretty nervous. I, uh, the trees above me were perfectly clear, but there was one limb dangling above mischief. I'm sure he and I <laughs> were a tad nervous about it throughout the night so hearing that wind howl is just it's pretty neat but 
a little anxiety producing. We made it through. I can see the valley down there. Well, today has been a lot of this, except uh, it's been up and down, up and down. But now we're on the last two mile stretch, which is all downhill to the road 311. And from there, I can do a quarter mile road hike, and get a Mountain Dew. It is 1142 and about 51 degrees or so. And if you stop, you get cold. But if you're moving, pretty really it's a really nice temperature so we are on the last two mile stretch which is all downhill down to the highway 311 where we will walk over and grab a sit and I've said that probably too many times so I may <laughs> have to edit that out I don't know um, but anyway so we're, we're on the final stretch probably a mile and a half left and it's dropping pretty nicely here so turned into a lot of pine, pine straw, and rock on the trail. So pretty easy for me, who, someone who has good knees. Uh, Chuck and Mischief might play a little havoc on, but slowly and surely we'll get there. Nothing like a road walk to a gas station. As Chuck said, it won't be the highlight of his trip, but <laughs> it might be worth it. So this is Bobo and I waiting. Chuck's going inside, he's gonna grab his stuff and then He's gonna come out and watch Bobo for me so I can go inside. And I think she has earned whatever kind of sandwich I can buy in there. Turns out it's, I think it's just a gas station kind of thing. Um, but I think she's also gonna get an ice cream. She doesn't know it yet. I think she's gonna like it. Three thirty-seven p.m. So we had an extended break, went about three hours, and fifteen minutes or so, at the gas station. Um, I ate three chili dogs. Well, I ate about two chili dogs because Bobo ate another one, and one more hot dog, a soda, and a Reese's Pieces. And now we're headed back on trail. So 
we've got two point something miles to go <laughs> depending upon who you ask and uh we're guessing at about 1500 foot elevation gain is what i think and um i'm probably totally wrong we will find out so i can see the trailhead so we're gonna go hit it Okay, next mile off trail is rocky and steep in seconds. Please use caution and follow white blazes closely. Okay, so we'll follow all those white blazes, okay? Come on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Bubba. Come on,
Mark. Come on, Bubba. Come on. Come on. Come on up. All right, so here's the AT, and where it goes south, from this point, that direction. So it's finally the break from the AT. Okay, the 627, 48 degrees, and we are just past Dragon's Tooth. It's right over there. Mischief is setting up there, and Chuck is setting up there. He's he's sleeping with Bobo tonight. Uh, <laughs> the hike up was a lot of fun, and Bobo did a lot better than I had thought. Well, I mean, I knew she would do good, but she did she did even better. I think she really enjoyed the, uh, the little acrobatics she had to do, bouncing around and such. Uh, because of her pack, uh, we had to help her in one spot. Uh, actually, technically a little bit on the second spot because there's some rebar we're supposed to climb up, kind of like uh, stairs, and uh, just pushed her butt up on that one. And we have an excellent view of the valley over there. Is that the Catawba Valley? Over where? That way. Yeah. And the sunset right behind me here. So. Pretty awesome. The only thing that's not quite so awesome is the 400 people over there that are young whippersnappers having fun. Dang it. <laughs> so hopefully they won't do a party all night kind of thing. Hopefully they'll just enjoy the sunset and go home or camp and real, you know, be quiet. But we'll see.
8.08 a.m. Currently 36 degrees. Currently 38 degrees. When we woke up right before sunrise, uh, it was right around 36, I think it was. So didn't get to freezing like we thought. And uh, walked up and watched a, an amazing sunrise from Dragon's Tooth. And now we are all packed up. Um, by we, it is Chuck and I right now. Mischief actually headed out early so you can get a head start. And we're about to get moving. <laughs> Back to the AT. Let's go AT northbound. Come on. No, she she loves this. Nine fourteen. I have no idea what temperature it is, but it feels hot in the sun, doesn't it? Yeah. It's nice. It, it feels is hot in the sun, cool in the shade. Yep. yep. So it feels good right now. And we've got a nice little viewpoint about a mile in. And that is the mountain that we were on yesterday. That's North Mountain. And that's McAfee Knob over there, right? And Tinker's over there. And Tinker's North Mountain, Tinker, far. McAfee. Yep, so we can see the entire, all, all the places we've been so far. Pretty cool. <laughs> oh.
Take this. Have a good one. It is 1231 and we just passed over the Catawba Creek again. This time on the south side of the Catawba Creek though. And we've got, it looks like a four or 500 foot climb from the creek up to the ridge line. And then we'll follow the ridge line all the way to the parking lot, back to 311. So 4.2 miles, we can do it. All right, mister? So it is 4.33 p.m. and we have officially completed, what did we complete? The Triple Crown Loop. The Virginia Triple Crown Loop. That'd be uh, Mischief, myself, and Bobo back here. I don't know if you could see her. <sighs> Eight point something mile a day. Yeah. And some of us are a little worse for the wear, but, uh, <laughs> but it was worth it for me, so. Yeah, my knee's all messed up. <laughs> so he's gonna, have to, he's gonna have to figure out his knee and heal up. Okay, we're done. Now it is uh, time for a burger. Yeah. Okay, so if Dad gets half a hamburger, you get half a hamburger. Is that a fair deal? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't see her complaining. I do for these videos. For people who just to ride the trail, just go around. So. <laughs> uh,